How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, oh, like me. I once was low, but now I found was blind, but now. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a red like, like me, oh, like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this evening's broadcast. We welcome you today, and we ask you to join us as we will just worship the Lord tonight and welcome Him, welcome Him into our homes, welcome Him wherever we are watching from. I pray tonight that you will get the break that you need, you will get the understanding that you need. And today, may every word, every word that is ministered tonight, let it fall on good ground. Don't forget tonight before we start, as we're still in the time of worship, share tonight's program. Don't um, uh, stop sharing. Share the program. Hit the share button. And let's see. You'll never know, as I always say, who God is going to bless through your share. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, let us just worship the Lord in a little while. And then Jeffrey will open in prayer. Praise God, 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 praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, we give you Hallelujah. Let's open in prayer, Jeff. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let us pray this time. Our most gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, we come before you in that mighty name of Jesus. We thank you tonight, Father. We can tune into your presence. We thank you, Lord. We can connect to you tonight, Father. We pray for a mighty outpouring of your anointing and strength to come and fill this place, to fill the homes of your children, Lord. Even many are receptive of you this morning, this evening. I pray that you grant them a double portion of your anointing. Fill their hearts, fill their homes, fill their lives, Lord, I pray. May the power of Jesus Christ permeate in their lives. And God, I pray for a supernatural touch for your children tonight, especially. Many are going through difficult times Lord many are going to persecute the times but God we know through it all we can put our faith and trust in Jesus through it all we know that you're alive through it all we know God tonight that you'll come through for your children tonight father we might be going through a storm tonight father but we're never gonna go down because you are Jaira you more than enough you're always enough and you are enough for us tonight, Jesus. We pray for a supernatural blessing. Even upon your servant, Lord, he ministers thy word. And your worship, Father, we give you worship from our hearts. Because, Father, you deserve our worship. We sing songs to a God who cares and understands. We praise a God who listens to our heart tonight, Father. I pray for your blessing to come and touch your children once again. In Jesus' mighty name, with much thanksgiving, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, good evening, everybody, and we welcome you to tonight's broadcast. We thank you once again for just joining us on this Tuesday night as we come to worship and pray. But beyond that is to also listen to the Word of God. I pray tonight that everyone that is going to be online, whoever God has intended this Word to go out to tonight, that they will be online, they will receive that Word. 
and God is going to do something extraordinary tonight. I want you to do this very special uh, hashtag this evening before we commence. Hashtag Satan is defeated. Can you say that with me tonight? Hashtag Satan is defeated. I want to start this evening's broadcast, this evening's service on a, on a very strong platform. On a platform where we come in total surrender to God. Total, total surrender to God. So come. Thank you, Rochelle Naidu. That's right. Hashtag Satan is defeated. Rochelle and Rani Naidu. Jane Governor. Samantha and Trevor Nyker. Cindy and Salva Governor. Chantal and Craig Naidu. You better believe that tonight. Satan is defeated. Welcome Rishen Maestri, all the way from Johannesburg, together with your wife and baby, Vanesh Rinaidu and Narvin, and their little girl. Welcome to Jolene and Cole Naidu, Levarden and uh, Lenisha Rajpal, Darren and Kaveshni Mudli, Neela Barnabas, Janine Lisa Chetty, together with your husband Dustin. Welcome, welcome, every single one of you. Hashtag Satan is defeated. Welcome Chantal and Kevin Pillay. Welcome Jonathan and Felicia Francis. Gloria Naidu and Shadrach Naidu. Welcome. Your husband and your son is here with us today. Welcome David and Tracy Chetty together with your girls. Welcome Alan Govansami. Good to have you online tonight. Satan is indeed defeated. Diana and Ashley Kiston. Marina Alexander, Geeta Alexander, Trevor and Celia Francis, welcome to tonight. Maggie and Tishen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Rashad and Lorna Rashid, welcome this evening. Priscilla Henry, we welcome you this evening. Satan is defeated. Rani Ganesh, together with your family, welcome, welcome. Prashen and Janisha Manilal, we welcome you tonight. And that is right, Satan is defeated. Joy and Manny Rubin, welcome, welcome, welcome. Vino and Shamendran Mudli, Lorraine Julian, all the way from Cape Town, welcome. Linda, Linda Mirage, together with your family, welcome. Satan is defeated. Get ready tonight for God is going to set somebody free this evening. Somebody is going to be set free this evening. Welcome Clarissa Gounden. Welcome Denver G uh, Mudley. Welcome Candace Barnabas. Satan is defeated. That's right. Satan is defeated. Welcome everybody. Now Jeff, I don't know, but earlier on you were praying and in your prayer a song dropped into my spirit. And I want to sing that. I'm going to take you by surprise. If you don't know it, it's okay. But I want to sing it as an encouragement to somebody tonight. Because tonight, we are talking about discouragement. And guess what? When you come through the course of life, and when you get to a stage where you have seen all that has happened, you've experienced everything that has taken place. You can sit back in a position even though the enemy has tried his level best and he has not got you. He has not taken you out. You can be in a place where you can just sit back and you can sing this song. Andre Crouch. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God Through it all Through it all I've learned to depend upon His Word Are you ready tonight? Are you ready tonight as we sing that song in the background? That even though everything that has happened and the enemy has tried his best, you are still standing today. You are still in a position where God is taking you higher, further and deeper with him. 
God is not finished with you yet. God is not over with you yet. Every attack from the enemy is only evidence that God is on your side. Every attack from the enemy is only evidence that God is busy with your life. So get ready this evening. That's right. Welcome. Welcome Tamron Raju. Welcome to tonight's program. Welcome Ivan and Faith Lazarus. Welcome Segi Governor. Welcome Sylvia Beacom. Welcome, welcome every one of you. Welcome to tonight's program. God is going to set somebody free. Welcome, Cookies Manicum. Welcome, Leanne Ailu. For God is going to do something, something special tonight. But before we go any further, I'm going to hand over to Jeffrey. If you haven't already shared, share the program. Get as many people on. For God is moving this evening. Let's worship the Lord, Jeff. Feel free and lead tonight. Amen. We just want to greet you in Jesus' precious name tonight. Feel free, relax, enjoy the presence of God. We're going to pass the Noah's favorite song this evening before we get into a time of worship. Amen. Together to praise the Lord, all together to sing His praise, all together now. And there's no joy like serving you, and there's no joy like loving you. And there's no joy like praising you. So happy, Lord, to love and to serve you. So happy, Lord, to love and to serve you. So happy, Lord, to love and to serve you. So happy, Lord, to, to love and to serve you. I love you. Sing, I love you. So happy, Lord, to love and to serve you. So help me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you and give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we just worship you tonight, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This brand is a brand new anointing that breaks the yoke of sin. There's a brand new anointing 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank Lord, you, Jesus. I lift your name on high. Oh, Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven. You, you came, came from, from heaven, heaven to earth, earth to, to show the way from the earth to the cross. My day. Oh, from the cross yeah. From the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. 
You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I lift your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. We just worship Thank and you, praise Jesus. your name, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's right. Just lift your voices and give him all the glory Ooh. now. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We just glorify your name now. We praise your name, Lord. That's right. Lift your hands and give him all the praise now. Iriba ba shendele ba yondo la bo setere bendo. Iriba ba yenda ba ba si chola bo she. Iriba ba ba setere bendo. Feel the fire of the Holy Ghost and fire. We worship you, Jesus. Iriba ba ba yendo la bo ndo. Rimas ke bendo la ba si le be be be. That's right, just worship him now. Let the Holy Ghost fill you tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a mighty move of the Spirit tonight. He just feel it tonight. Hallelujah. There's fire, fire, fire. Oh, there's Thank wonder you, working Jesus. fire tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. We well, love everybody you, tonight, every one of you that we are online, I want you as you are there Thank in your you, homes Jesus. and if you are ready for what God is about to Hallelujah. do. I want you to switch off all your distractions. Everything that may distract you. Switch it off. If it is your phone, switch it off. If you're watching on your phone, that's something else. Then that's okay. But I want you to get rid of every distraction. Every distraction. Get rid of it tonight. For I believe that God is going to set somebody free this evening. Father, I pray tonight that everyone that is online, I cover them firstly under the blood of Jesus. I bind every spirit of distraction. I bind every spirit of intimidation. I bind every spirit of fear. And I rebuke its powers tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray God that as your word will be ministered this evening, let there be a breakthrough for your children. I pray, Lord, tonight that everything that you've purposed and desired to come through to your children through your word, let it fall on good, good ground. Ground that is going to produce years and years and years that are still to come. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody this evening said, Amen. Well, I greet you all this evening in the name of Jesus Christ and thank you to Jeff and Nathan for the time of worship. We do have time constraints with all the lockdown and all of that, so we cannot go any, you know, much later and what have you. And some people are also uh, traveling and uh, so we want to just, you know, abide by all of that. Now, I want to this evening, before I get into this teaching, I'm speaking this evening on this subject that I've entitled Discouragement, the Silent Killer. And I want you to hear my heart today as I will just speak. And I want you to hear my heart as I will minister. And as I minister this word, please, 
I may switch off and I may just teach at times. But I'm speaking to you as a shepherd tonight. I want you to get the revelation. Because the devil is running havoc in the lives of people. But tonight, that ends. Last week, we declared that it is written. We reminded him it is written. Now allow me just to set a little platform before I continue this evening. And the platform that I want to set now is just to talk about this subject or this word called discouragement. Let me read a story for you that will bless you. And maybe I will use this as a platform to minister on so that people can understand what is discouragement and why discouragement. It's important people understand that. Because, you see, when you understand, then most of your battle is won. But when you are ignorant, and you do not know the truth, then you are not free. You are still in bondage, because the Bible says that we must know the truth, and it is the truth that will set us free. Somebody say amen tonight. So this story goes like this. A long time ago, there was a rumor that the devil is going out of business. He was running this very lucrative, very successful, very highly uh, motivated and highly publicized and highly advertised business. But the devil was going out of business. And guess what? He is selling all his tools to whomever bids the most for them. And so you picture Satan now. He's going out of business. He can't help it. And now he's selling all his tools to everybody. The highest bidder gets all his tools. And so one night he opened the doors to his customers. And he showcased all his tools to them. You see, one night Satan operates. The story says one night... Night time, lots of things happen, but he also operates in the day. But Satan opened up his shop and is showcasing all his tools for the people. Right on the front line in the top shelf, these are the tools that were there. And they were highly priced. High bidders were coming, paying big money for it. One of the tools was hate. Another tool was jealousy. Another tool that he was selling was fear and deceit. And many, 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 many more tools. But somewhere in a dark corner of the room was a very old and a very harmless and a worn out object nobody was looking at it in fact it was like almost collecting dust in the corner people couldn't see past the dust and it was looking as if it had been used throughout all the time it had the highest price of all Somebody asked the devil what that instrument was and why was that one more expensive than these. These ones were expensive, but that one was so expensive. And the devil said, that one is called discouragement. 
it is the most expensive tool because it is the one I use most on people. When nothing else works, I can enter slowly into their minds and into their hearts and nobody notices. And once I am there and get them discouraged, I can do whatever I want with them. This tool is so worn out because I've been using it since the dawn of humanity and it works with everybody. Very few people know that this tool belongs to me. Now listen very carefully and very listen closely to what I'm about to say as I set a platform for this evening's teaching on discouragement. I see there are many of you that are online. Share. If you haven't shared, share. Many people need this word tonight. Very few people know that this tool belongs to me, said Satan. When they get discouraged and lose hope, they think it's them to blame. They think other people are to blame. They think the world around them is to blame. Laughed the devil. People hit obstacles in life. They encounter so many problems in life. But when they get discouraged, when they lose hope, that's just me doing my job. Father, I pray tonight, let the revelation of your word fall in the hearts of every man, woman, boy and girl that is online today. Let the spirit of understanding be the prevalent spirit tonight. Set your people free. Set them free tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody this evening said, Amen. Sunday we spoke about forgiveness. If you haven't had a chance to listen to that word, I ask you to go back, check the Facebook channel or the YouTube channel, and listen to the word on forgiveness. Because the Christian community is under huge attack, but the power is weak because we are not forgiving people anymore. And we think everybody owes us something, but not realizing it starts with us, not with them. It starts with us. We've got to do something in order to get the breakthrough that God has destined for us. And unless you get the understanding of that, God will never forgive you. If you still harbor unforgiveness against those in your circles. Get the word. Get the revelation. Get delivered. And live in purpose. Not in a dream. Not in a fantasy. But live in accurate purpose as the Lord will lead you as the Spirit of God hovers over your life. Discouragement is the silent killer. The devil uses that. And like you heard the story, the devil wants to take you out. But the problem that is taking place in the body of Christ is that everybody is not understanding that we are fighting the spiritual powers and rulers of this dark world and we are not fighting flesh and blood. And I want you to catch the spirit today because... 
Because the eyes of your understanding must be opened tonight. And no more must there be immaturity in the body of Christ. But we must become mature and not fight and kill and devour each other in the faith. Satan is doing enough of that. We don't need Christians behaving like children and fighting each other. Satan is sitting back. He's laughing. He says, look at those people belonging to God. I got them and they don't know it. Joshua chapter 1. The Bible is very explicit in Joshua chapter 1. And I want to read from verse number 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He says, Moses, my servant is dead. And this is the Lord speaking. And he says, now therefore, arise and go over this Jordan and you will, and all this people into the land that I am giving to them. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and from this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory, saith the Lord. Now it's very important to understand that God has given the children of Israel a promise. Just like he's given you and me a promise. But before anything happens with that promise, the devil comes in and he wants to take you off that plan Because he knows the power of the promise. You see the power of the promise is so powerful. That it can take Satan out just like that. And he knows. And that is why he'll use every trick in the book. To bring you to a place of discouragement. And so the Lord said, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you and I will not leave you nor forsake you. How many times have we heard that word being spoken time and time and time and time again. But yet we still fall prey to the devil And we allow his most expensive tool, most used tool, to attack us. And we fall prey to his plans. And it's interesting that God did not say it once. Neither did he say it twice. He said it Three times. And if he says something three times, that means it's important for you as a child of God. Stay with me. I'm getting somewhere tonight. God's going to give somebody a breakthrough today. Don't ever, ever, ever get into a place where you're distracted. I said it earlier. Beware of your distractions now. If you'd rather be distracted and go and do other things, rather go. But this is a time to listen to the word of God. This ain't no show tonight. 
Not as every Sunday or Tuesday a show in this church or any other church. It's not a show. We need to get our act together before God. Or the devil will get an act over you. Before it's too late. And God says to Joshua. First time he says be strong and courageous. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Number one. He says be strong and courageous. And then again he says only be strong. And very courageous. Not just courageous. But now he says be very courageous. And he says, be careful to do according to all the law. Not some, not half, not a portion, not what you like, not what you don't understand. All the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. And he says, don't turn from it now. He says, be careful. You're going to obey all those commands that don't turn, don't turn, don't turn from it. He said, don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. And that is what happens with you and I on this walk with God, on this journey called life. Everybody wants to turn left. Everybody wants a short left, short right. Everybody wants to do their own thing and go their own way. God says to Joshua, do not turn from it to the right hand. Or do not turn from it to the left hand that you may have Listen to what I'm about to say. God says, why mustn't you turn? Because you will have good success wherever you go. Mm, 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 mm. Is somebody listening to me tonight? So there is something with this word, courageous. First he says, Be be courageous. Then he says, only be very courageous. So something is there about that word and why God is wanting you to be courageous and not a wimp in the body of Christ. Not a weakling in the body of Christ, but strong and very courageous. And then this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate on the day and night. So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. And that is why children of God, you and I, need to read the word and read the word and read the word. Even in this lockdown, I ask you the question, have you grown in God? Or do you know more about what's happening in the world than what's happening in the word? Have you grown in God? Don't answer it online. Some of you may just be embarrassed. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. So when we are courageous. And when we meditate on the word. Then success is coming. So tonight I speak to those of you. Who are in a place called discouragement alley. Or discouragement town. God is going to change your address tonight. Verse number 9. And the Lord says for the third time to Joshua. Have I? It's like he's coming to you. It's like he's saying to you. All of you are online. He's saying to you. Have I not commanded you? Be courageous. Do you understand? For Stanjay, if God is Africana, do you understand? Be courageous. Have I not commanded you to be courageous? 
So if I've commanded you to be courageous, why go opposite or contrary to what I've asked you to do? Not one time, not two times, but my son and daughter, three times. Three times. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? God says, do not be frightened. How many people are frightened? I've got children. One of my children gets frightened sometimes. They'll sleep alone. And they come to our room and say, Daddy, I want to sleep with you. I say, no problem. After a few minutes, I go back to their room and put them in the bed and pray and they sleep. I remember when I was growing up, I used to be frightened too for the dark. I used to be frightened too for certain people. When I get into their presence, I used to be very frightened one of the people I used to be very frightened for was the headmaster of the school because he knew that I was a skeleton and he used to want to nail me if I make a mistake. So, yes, I ought to have been frightened for the headmaster. But I'm telling you today as a child of God, you must never fear for God is with you tonight, saith the Lord Almighty. He says, I will be with you wherever you go. And if he gave you that word that he's going to be with you, then why get discouraged when things don't go the way you want it to go? Somebody sent me a message earlier on and they said, Pastor, I'm going for the second interview. And in our discussions, I said to them, you know what? You know what will really make a difference? Is that when things don't go the way we want it to go, but our faith still stays the same because we know God is in control. And even if we don't get that promotion, or we don't get that bond, or we don't get that deal, or we don't get whatever it is we trust in God for, God is still God. Whether you are unhappy, or whether you're not unhappy, God is still God. I'm saying to you tonight. But God is looking for a child of God. Who can stand and say, I'm strong and I'm courageous and I will always remain that way. What are some of the causes of this thing called discouragement? Genesis 37, you read about Joseph and his brothers. The injustice of Joseph and all his brothers. They hated him because he was the favorite. Hey, you, who think you are not the favorite? Who says that you are not God's favorite? He didn't he tell you you're the apple of his eye? Or would you rather be the banana in someone's eye here on earth or the apple of God's eye? You choose. Choose tonight what's going to make you happy. Please man or please God. Fearing man is not of God. Fear God and you'll see things happen. Injustices over the past. Go and read Exodus 6, 6 to 9. Some of the causes of this, this, of the, of the, this discouragement is addiction people who are addicted to things and they can't give up they can't get out they can't say okay i'm struck they are just so discouraged because they are in bondage over addiction marriage issues marriages are not working out the way it should be it brings people to a place of discouragement 
people that are hurt you hurt by your family you hurt by your friends because of actions or things or promises not kept etc etc they hurt and they get discouraged and yet god says don't put your trust in the arms of flesh and he even gives us the answer he says because they will fail you but some of us put more trust in man than in god and when man lets us down we blame god how does that work i don't know you tell me man lets us down we fight with god god gave us the direction he says don't trust man trust me lean not on the arms of flesh lean on me and then when we failure ha huh? he don't like me i'm not his favorite you'll find every reason and trick in the book to go down discouragement alley some people love discouragement so much it's become their pet you know it's another word for pet you bound by that spirit unbeknown to you it's controlling you and before long if you don't watch out the enemy wants to take you out of your purpose child of god you're a child of god who has a purpose you are not here by chance you are not here per se god has a divine purpose and he's placed you on the earth to make a difference and the devil knows that difference that is why he wants to attack you you feel inadequate your prayers are unanswered and you get discouraged yet god says it's not your way it's my way but still we get discouraged listen to this i like this discouragement means to take out the courage from you god said to joshua be courageous and be strong that means have courage so discouragement is taking out the discouragement the courage sorry from you so you become courageless another word for courageless is discouragement it drains the courage out the devil wants to drain it out to be discouraged means to take away the courage from a child of god and you and i are born to have courage because god's promised us he'll be with us wherever we go now let me say this to the body of christ to churches people who are listening family church wherever church you belong you're a child of god don't get discouraged by your pastor or your leaders or people in church that's part of the course don't be immature don't leave your church don't run away don't do foolish things and don't do things that you're going to regret later and then you got so much of pride that it keeps you in bondage discouragement will take you off your purpose if you don't watch out there are many people in discouragement valley and they are camping there and they think they are okay but inside they are in turmoil and in pain in misery no hope and no joy in their lives negativism negativism despair fear all of that depression anxiety failure giving up is part of the agenda because of discouragement valley let me say to someone today we are coming against that spirit tonight we're going to release the power of hope the power of joy the power of confidence the power of peace over your life today in jesus name are you are you ready are you ready are you ready for that tonight the consequences of discouragement Oh, oh Lord, oh Lord, I'm discouraged. I'm all alone. Nobody loves me. Oh Lord, and you get into a place where you want to have a party called the pity party. You want to alienate yourself. You feel lost, depressed, hurt, worthless, hopeless. And above all, Christians thrive on hurting people. 
Why do we thrive on hurting people? That's ambiguous what I just said. As Christians, I'm seeing that we are thriving on hurting people. That means doing harm to them, doing evil to them. We thrive on that. And we also thrive on people that are hurting. Why? Why? Why do we behave that way? If someone is hurting and someone is down, why do we get excited? Why do we go and gossip and tell everybody they are hurting and this has happened and it's a big party? When you're killing your own soldiers, you're shooting your own feet. Before you know it, you'll be footless. And you won't be able to walk in your own battle. Because the devil has got you gripped before you even know it. And the scales are so thick on your spiritual eye that you cannot see that the enemy is wanting to take you out. Why do we thrive on hurting people? We need to stop that as a body of Christ. I'm talking about discouragement today. Many people who are discouraged are some of them are people that are just, they say silly things, foolish things, hurt other people, hurt them in they say in the, what they say. And then they know in on the inside they go and get into a corner. They know they've done wrong. They get discouraged. Tonight you're going to be set free. Sometimes your biggest hurt will become your biggest break. When somebody hurts you and somebody does something wrong and evil and, 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 and untrue against you. Hey, I've had experiences like that. But let me say this. God is not testing the arrogance in me. God is looking for the humility in me on how I respond to the people that hurt me. I'm not scared. I'm not scared because he's my God. What did he tell me? He said, Noel, be strong and courageous. Didn't he say that? He said, Jeffrey, be strong and be courageous. He said, Sam, be strong and be courageous. So why fall prey to the devil's schemes and become a person who has no courage. What God starts, God finishes. His ways don't make sense, but eventually you will see it. You just need to have patience. It's a virtue. It's a gift of the Spirit. Have patience. Have patience. And you will see that your ways... <laughs> Are not his ways. His ways are better than our ways. Far better. Ask me, I'll tell you. I tried it my way many times. And I was highly embarrassed. Don't listen to the enemy's report now. Because we tend to ask God. So many times we say, God, change the situation. I'm discouraged. Change it. <laughs> not knowing God has put us in that situation to change us. We say God changed the situation. But God put the situation there to change us. So if he's not fixing it, guess what? He's using it to fix you. So don't worry, people hate you also. For those of you that are discouraged, because people don't like you, don't like you anymore, don't talk to you, don't worry. Because some of them hate you, why? Because you deny them a chance to use you. Am I speaking to somebody today? Don't worry if people don't like you. God loves you. That's all that matters. And while we're on that subject, for those of you that have made a mistake, Psalm 51 2 says, Thoroughly wash me inside and out of all my crooked deeds. Watch me. Wash me. Cleanse me from all my sin. For I am fully aware of all I have done wrong. And my guilt is there staring me in the face. For those of you that have made a mistake, God knows. When you go to him in repentance, God will forgive you. It's okay. God still loves you. Your past mistakes don't ever determine your future or your identity. Listen, don't 
be held hostage by your past. Many of you are being held hostage by your past. And you're in a place of discouragement. Discouragement for valley. You paid a big price from the devil's shop for discouragement. God must get the glory through our story. Many people are not getting a breakthrough. And this is the reason why. They're still discouraged because they're not seeing a breakthrough. God doesn't want to share his glory with anybody. Not you, not me, not anybody on this earth. God is a jealous God. And no man must get credit for what God wants to do. So that is why many of you who are discouraged and you're waiting, God has an answer, God has an answer, God has an answer, etc. God is waiting for the time when you can say, God, all to you I surrender. All to you I freely give. And then you know that it is not man, but it is God. If man does something for you, he'll come. What will he do? He'll celebrate and take the glory. But when God does it, it's something totally different. God wants to take you on your journey for your story to be told for his glory. Psalm 115, 1 says, Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name we give glory. Why? For your sake. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Let us not cut hurting people. Children of God tonight, let me say this. As Christians, we must not cut hurting people off. People who are hurting, it's our job to help them, to love them, to bring them back to where they ought to be. That's why God has you and I. We are his arms and we are his feet. But instead of helping them, we hurt and crush and kill them even more. Why do we behave so foolishly? And we wonder why we're discouraged? Go figure. People who have lost everything. People who are backslidden. People who have been bruised and they are hurting. Some of them, because they look, look differently to me and you, we look the other way. Why do we behave so foolishly? When God is using you to encourage somebody. Encourage. Because in you he's placed courage. And when you got courage in you. You can encourage somebody else. But when you choose to step into the devil's plan. Your courage goes. You get drained out. You got no courage. What can you give? A hurting person can only hurt other people. Get healed. Get healed. Get healed. And be an encourager tonight. Now what must I do pastor? Tell me, tell me. What must I do to get to a place of encouragement? Okay. Thank you for asking. I'll tell you. Number one. Be grateful. Don't be ungrateful. Some of you are discouraged for things you don't have. Come on now. God won't bless ungrateful people. If you are ungrateful, God's not going to bless you. When you're grateful, God will bless you. Mm. You see, you must know that you're part of a plan. You must know that the attacks is not because of where you are, but the attacks are because of where God is taking you. Write that down if you want to write something down tonight. And let that be stuck on your forehead, in your room, on the front of your house, as a reminder, or on your windscreen of your car. That every time you get an attack, don't get discouraged, but get excited. Because it's because where God is taking you, he's allowing those attacks to make you stronger. Shut doors. Oh, God. Open the door, open the door, we say. And God's not opening it and we're in discouragement valley. Just thank God if it's shut. He may be protecting you from what's on the other side. Who knows? Who knows? 
If God's not opening that door, he knows what's on the other side of that door. It could be something that will kill you. And you'll be in a lost eternity. So he's keeping that door shut. Sometimes he opens the door for you to walk out of a place that you shouldn't be in. I just thought I'd tell you that tonight. Be discerning. And peace, Jehovah Shalom, will be your guide. Your next move has already set up. So be ready. A wise man said this, I like these words. He says, don't be afraid to start over again. <laughs> he says, this time you're not starting from scratch, you're starting from experience. But the problem with the body of Christ, we've got so much of experience, but we don't understand that it is in our favor that we have that experience. We forget it so quickly. We forget it so quickly. We forget it so quickly. The Lord is close to the broken hearted and he saves all of those that are crushed in spirit. I want every one of you tonight, you understand that the subject of discouragement. I've touched, I've scratched the surface on a few of this. It goes very deep. But I want you to stand, every one of you in your home, stand, get ready tonight. I'm going to pray something and read something over your life today. I want you to get ready. And we're going to break the spirit tonight of discouragement. For this spirit is not going to have its way anymore in your life. You are going to be delivered. You are going to be set free tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. That is right. You are going to be set free in the name of Jesus Christ tonight. Stand everybody. Stand everyone. Every one of you. Every one of you. Stand. Stand. And I want to see every one of you. Are you ready? If you're ready, I want you to hashtag I'm ready. Come. Let me see that. Let me hear you. I want to see. I want you to acknowledge that tonight. You see, when you acknowledge that, you're acknowledging it to God. You're acknowledging it in the spirit atmosphere. Anything that is done in the spirit atmosphere is going to produce. It's going to bring forth life. It's going to bring forth blessings. Uh, because as you declare it, so shall it be, saith the Lord. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Denver. Denver Moodley, you started it off tonight. I'm ready. Welcome. Well done. Vanesh Naidu, well done. Thank you, Rochelle and Rani Naidu. Thank you, Gloria and Shadrach Naidu. You are ready. Thank you. Thank you, Priscilla Naya. Thank you, Chantel and Craig Naidu and your children. Thank you, Chantel and Kevin Pillay. God sees that you are ready tonight. Thank you, Rani and your children. Thank you, Alan Govansami, Ashley and Vinay Pillay, Julie Naidu. Thank you, thank you, thank you David Chetty, Tracy Chetty, thank you Kalisha Harris, thank you Priscilla Henry, thank you Diana Kiston, thank you. Come on, come on, say, hashtag, I am ready. Thank you Prashan and Janisha Manila, thank you Chantal Peter Pato, thank you your husband and your children as well. Thank you, Jane, Sunday and Salva Governor. Thank you, Shirley and Desmond Frank. Thank you, Linda and your children. Thank you, Linda Maraja, Neela Barnabas, Tishen Naidu, Maggie Archery. Thank you, all of you. Stand in your homes, Levadan, Lenisha. Thank you. Thank you, Rishen Maestri and your wife and child. Thank you, Candace Barnabas. Thank you, Shanice Devon, Obed Devon, Shabron Devon. Thank you tonight, Elizabeth Radha Krishna and your husband Clyde. Thank you that you are ready. Brian and Rosanna David, uh, I'm speaking your names in the atmosphere tonight. I'm registering your names uh, in the atmosphere tonight. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Samantha Kenny and Dion Kenny. Thank you, Segi Govinda. Thank you, Colleen Ramya, Leon Ramya and your sons. Thank you Samantha Nike and Trevor Nike and your two children. Thank you Colleen Joseph. Thank you Priscilla Naya, Ivan Lazarus, Faith Lazarus. Koshere lebendo ya koriere lebeyate ye korola bondoro loboya yere lebebe ya kashato shoriere lebebeyate koriere labaya kashate ndere lebendoro loboyate Thank you, Keshen Thumberin. Thank you, thank you, thank you that we are ready tonight. Thank you, Lorna and Rashid and your girls. Thank you, Rishad. Thank you, thank you. 
For God is a God who says, uh, I will be with you wherever you go. And as one of the actors said it in one of the fam famous movies, you can take that to the bank. Because that is a fact. God never lies. Are you ready today? As I was up in the office, Jeffrey was downstairs. He was singing a beautiful song. And it goes like this. It was, it's a whole old hymn that I grew up in in Peter Maritzburg. I loved it. He sang it. He caught my attention. I said, let's sing it. It says, I am thine, O Lord. Come help me, Jeff. I have heard thy voice and he told thy love to me but i long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to thy precious bleeding sign and i love this next verse it says Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to Thy blessings. Bleeding side. Hallelujah. There's so many of you that are all ready tonight. Every one of you, I want you to remain standing in your home and get ready today. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen Ramia. Thank you, Tilly Mudley. Thank you, Cyril Mudley. Thank you, Caleb Mudley. Thank you, Sylvia Beacom. Thank you, Sandra Soraya. Thank you, thank you, you're all ready. Thank you, Lorraine Julian, hashtag I am ready. Thank you, thank you, Vino Mudley and Shamendran Mudley. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Colin David and your family. Thank you, thank you, Priscilla Naya. Thank you, every one of you, for God is moving supernaturally. Are you ready tonight? Every one of you that has said you are ready, I want you to bow your heads with me today. Many times the enemy has placed you in discouragement. And you see, unless you know who you are, unless you know why you are, unless you know what is the purpose for you, unless you know all of that, you'll fall prey to the enemy's schemes. But tonight it's going to end. Because when discouragement comes, you must know that when things don't go your way and things are not working out the way you want it to, you are on the right track. Because God is getting you ready for where he's taking you. Hallelujah. And this is the word I speak over your life today. And this is a word that comes from Psalm. The book of Psalms. You must study the book of Psalms. The other day Portia was showing me so many different things. There's another gentleman called Mr. David also revealed so many different truths that came out of the book of Psalms. It's amazing when you look at the life of David and how God used him. And this is what the Bible says and I pray this prayer over every one of you today. 
Get ready for you and raise your hands towards the screen. And I speak this over your life today. The Lord your God says, fret not because of evil doers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. How many of you are discouraged because people who are doing evil and wrong are doing better than you, but you are fretting, you are stressing, you are anxious because they're doing better than you. But God says tonight, fret not. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. But trust in the Lord and do good. Don't be discouraged and remain in discouragement valley. Trust in the Lord and just do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Let faithfulness be your friend and your bosom buddy. And verse number four, one of my favorite scriptures, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Those of you that are waiting for justice, those of you that were done wrong, evil against you, wrong against you, justice, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, not yours. But God will bring forth your righteousness as the light and also your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. For the evil doers shall be cut off. And those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the land. In just a little while the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. But the meek, and that is you tonight. The meek shall inherit the land. The meek shall inherit the land. And delight themselves in abundant peace. The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. But the Lord laughs at the wicked for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked draw his sword and bend their bows to bring down the poor and the needy to slay those who way is upright. Their sword shall enter their own hearts and their bows shall be broken, saith the Lord Almighty. Better is the little that the righteous has than the abundance of the many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous tonight. The Lord knows the days of the blameless and their heritage will remain forever. They are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine they will have abundance, but the wicked will perish. The enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish like smoke, they vanish away. The wicked borrows but does not pay back. But the righteous is generous and gives. For those blessed by the Lord shall inherit the land. But those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. And though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong. For the Lord will uphold your hand. Tonight, saith the Lord, I will uphold your hand. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Or oh, his children for begging for bread. He is ever lending generously and his children will become a blessing. Turn away from evil and do good. So shall you dwell forever for the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the children of the wicked shall be cut off. So don't worry. The righteous that is you. You're going to inherit the land. And you're going to dwell upon it forever. Saith the Lord Almighty. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom. And his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. The wicked watches over for righteous. And seeks to put him to death. The Lord will not abandon him to his power or let him be condemned when he's brought to trial. Wait 
for the Lord and keep his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land and you will look on when the wicked are cut off. I have seen a wicked, ruthless man spreading himself like a green laurel tree. But he passed away and behold, he was no more. Though I sought him, he could not be found. Mark the blameless and behold the upright. That is you. You are the blameless and you are the upright. For there is a future for the man of peace. But transgressors shall be altogether destroyed. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them. Because they take refuge in him. Saith the Lord Almighty. Bow your heads tonight. Father this evening I bring everyone that is online. I pray tonight God as we ministered this word. It is your word. It is not my opinion. It is not my word. It is your word. We are servants of God. What God speaks through his word. We speak and the Holy Spirit will come and do the work. And complete that work. And I pray tonight, everyone that is watching online, those that were in discouragement tonight, that spirit is broken. I break that power tonight in Jesus' name as I release Psalm 37 over their lives. I sense a freedom tonight. Somebody is being set free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Father, I pray tonight, cover your children under the blood. Let a God, no weapon formed against them prosper. Let them grow, be strong, and let them be courageous. You said it to Joshua, not once, not twice. You said it three times. And tonight I say the same word today over your children. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Have I not told you? Only be strong and courageous. Don't let the devil take away your courage and you become courageless. But remain encouraged in the Lord. And that attracts the presence of God. The blessings and the favor of God. Together with Jehovah Shalom. That you be in a good place. Even if you don't have it, you're still in a good place. Because you know that God is in control. Now may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you. In Jesus name, Amen. Thank you very much. Stay online. Jeff is going to play that favorite song of mine as we conclude. I love you. And as he does that, God bless you. Thank you for being online. Tuesday nights, God is doing something. Remain attentive to what the churches are speaking about in these days. For God is moving. Those that are asleep, I feel sorry. Those of you that are awake and have your spiritual ear open, you're going to be part of a remnant that God is going to use. God bless you. Here See you on Sunday. All together to sing your praise. All together to sing your love, all together now. And there's no joy like serving you, and there's no joy like loving you, so happy Lord.